Hello and welcome to the Geek Lab and the mad insane bugger that lives inside it, me. And today we've got something a little bit different because uh, I've been noticing a lot of these uh, cheap uh, LCD, LED powered uh, projectors on eBay and other sites. And this one is £27 shipped brand new. Yep, yeah, £27 for a projector. So, uh, there's a lot of people asking if uh, these are any good, and uh, Guru Larry, uh, who most of you probably know, uh, thought it might be a good idea if I reviewed one of these uh, to see if they're any good. So, that's exactly what I'm not going to do. Okay, I give in, I'm gonna do it. So, what we've got here, is the Excelvan Entertainment Projector. Uh, super bright LED technology, 20,000 hours. To a new person, that 20,000 hours is going to mean bugger all. What it means is <clears throat> they expect the uh, light source, the LED, to last about 20,000 hours, which is quite a lot of viewing. Uh, projects up to 60 inches, convenient. Input support AV, USB, and SD. And indeed, you can just plug uh, a USB card, USB card, USB stick, or an SD card into this, and it will read the contents, which is nice because you don't have to plug a computer into it to watch movies. So, what have we got? Got some people excitedly watching it, or well, they're falling asleep. We don't know. Uh, and a generic picture. Uh, now, you can get these with many different brands. There's a lot of people selling this projector. It's basically the same projector with different names in it. Names in on it. So there are many brands. You can get this. Now if you can see this properly. Do, 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 do. Uh, watch DVDs, family videos, <coughs> listen to playlists, view pictures and more. Connect DVD players and other peripherals through the AV connection. Uh, convenient input support, AV, USB and SD. <clears throat> Perfect for playlists or pictures built in speakers. Manual focus lens for clear crisp picture and tripod ready. One year warranty. So on the back, it tells us more about it. Yes, we can notice the limitation of this straight away. 320 by 240 resolution with adjustable focus lens. Obviously that is not a high resolution and we're going to see uh, later uh, the results of that uh, particular resolution. Built-in speakers, points there, actually under there. <clears throat> Virtually silent cooling fan, much quieter than traditional projectors. Tripod compatible, 48 lumens for a brilliant picture, powerful 20,000 hours LED lamp, needs never needs replacement. Unless you've had it more than 20,000 hours then it may need replacement. Convenient inputs, audio output jack for headphones or external speakers, and dual voltage power supply. Same sort of gum from the other sides. So, uh, nothing really new to be learnt there. So let's get this little thing out and see what it looks like and what sort of quality the actual product is. <clears throat> so, nice box. Uh, inside we get foam packaging. Does the job well. So let's put the box there. Now this has been repackaged by me, so it's not perfect. Because I'm a bit shy to this. Right, first of all, we see the instructions, which are uh, entertaining actually. They are your classic Chinglish instructions. Some parts crystal clear, other parts uh, are a total mess. To prevent electric shock, the projector and power adapter should be kept away from water as they have no waterproof function. That reads fine. <coughs> the professional appearance designed for ventilation has largely improved the stability and lifetime for the projector. Has it now? The LED projector can work for over 20,000 hours and can provide beautiful colours. Okay, not too bad. Let's have a look. Take the table of projection size and distance table for reference. Put the projector at a certain place within the distance scale and then rotate the lens to make the picture clear. 
So look at I know what I'm doing. But you get all the specs, you get all the support files. It tells you basically how to use it. Uh, doesn't tell you the specifics of the menu at all, but the basics are there. And it can be read, it's not perfect, but it's not, it's far from the worst I've ever seen. <clears throat> so, you get everything's bagged, power supply, standard Chinese power supply with no brand on, not much weight. But I have been using this and no issues so far. You have to excuse my voice, I still have a bit of a illness I'm recovering from. You get a remote control, which it says in the instructions that this section, the keypad, has no function. Uh, because this is going to be one of these generic uh, project uh, remotes you can get off eBay cheap. It doesn't come with batteries, this, so you've got to put some two double A's in it. Uh, you get one of them for your AV so your composite goes in there and that goes to the board inside which is very nice of them to provide and the unit itself here it is here's the bag and we can have a look Ta -da. right what we're going to do is change the camera angle we'll have a closer look at this thing. Right, so here is the XL Van uh, Entertainment Projector in the flesh or the plastic, whatever you prefer. But here it is, black plastic. The plastic is, uh, it's not too bad quality. The things, you know, it's not heavy, it's, it's, it's got a moderate weight to it. Uh, on the top you've got some buttons which are obviously cheap plastic coated things, that's probably going to wear off after a while, but seems alright. They work alright, they work fine. Uh, there's a vent on the top which serves no function, there's no holes in it at all. Uh, the power button, which is a bit confusing. Uh, it's function of it's a bit confusing, which you'll see in a bit. On the front, you've obviously got the lens with its lens cap, little rubber thing, which you twist. Yeah, it's not the highest quality mechanism, but it does do the job actually. <coughs> front cooling vent, which Serves no function, as it's got no holes. <laughs> side cooling vent, which does serve function, because it does have a hole. On the side we've got the AV in, which uh, you can plug the supplied cable into for your composite connection. Uh, SD cards, you can slip in there, and USB stick. So we've got one here, which I use in the Snuggie map. Slide in there, and it will read straight off that which you'll see in a moment. On the back, we have a HDMI connection, so you could, in theory, plug in a PS4, although this is, it does support HD, but it downscales it to 320, so it's not ideal for playing stuff that's got menus on, but you'll see why in a bit. Infrared port and a VGA connector. On the far side, you've got the DC in and the headphone jack. Underneath, not much, uh, basic information, some screws, a tripod mount, which is handy, and <laughs> stereo speakers. Now I'm not sure if both of these actually have a speaker in, I'm trying to, it does actually look like they've both got speakers in. Not that stereo that close is uh, really effective. Uh, so there we go, that's the unit itself. Now. As a bonus, the supplier I got this from uh, gives it you with a few little extras. Let's take that out of shot and open this. Now this is get out of shot. There you go. This is a lovely little case with some stuff in. Let's have a look. What you get is, if you've ever heard of it, younger people may not. This is Anaglyph, I can't pronounce that, I shall put it here, uh, 3D glasses. This is an older form of uh, 3D, it dates back basically to the 1940s. Focus, thank you, focus. Yep, these are basically Anaglyph 3D, uh, where you get two images, one is cyan, one is red, they're separated slightly, and uh, 
it gives you a 3D effect. Now, some people seeing these may think that this is a 3D projector. It is not. Anaglyph 3D can be used on most displays. Most things will show it no problem. Because uh, it's basically just a green and cyan picture being transmitted at the same time. They used to transmit these on uh, live TV in the 80s. You get these little uh, cardboard glasses that came in the TV Times. They put them on, they transmit the program, and you could watch Jaws 3D, which was shite. But yes, it comes with them, which, if you like that sort of technology, it's worth the price just for these things. Because they come in this lovely little case, which is a hard case, it's quite nice. And uh, as I said, it's probably including them in the sale to make people think this is a 3D projector, which it is not. But not only does it come with them, It comes with another one. And another one. Yep, there's three D there's three uh, sets of glasses. So if you want to look at uh, these you can go on YouTube and watch anaglyph uh, videos. You can watch, look at anaglyph pictures but you will need the glasses. But if you look at them without the glasses you'll get the idea of how the technology works. It's not complex. And you can convert any movie into that and watch it. So I suppose that's the idea here. Anyhow, right, what we're going to do, we've looked at the projector physically. Uh, I'm going to take this down to the snuggy mat, set it up, and we can go through its different functions and abilities and limitations. We'll be right back. Right, here it is set up in the snuggy mat. And just for reference, this uh, projector behind is my usual one. You can see how much larger uh, that is than this tiny thing. It's busy playing some music through the big sound system at the moment. I, you'll see more about that shortly. What I'm first going to do is show you the problem uh, you can have with the power button. It's not a problem, it just indicates weird, so I'll show you that now. Right, I've just unplugged this and replugged it in. What happens is uh, there's no light comes on at first, but then it flashes and you get this steady light. So you'd think it's powering itself up. But no, you're going to sit there for a long time if you're expecting that. You have to press this button. And then it go, the light goes out, so you think, oh, the power's not coming on. And it flashes, and it goes back to the steady state again. You think, ah, oh, what the bug is happening? And it does take a while, there it is. It's just fired up, so it is a bit of a quirk. It's one you get used to, but you do get used to it quickly. So let's go and have a look at the functionality of this bugger. Right, here we go. Uh, now, I've had to swap cameras to my SJ4000 because my main camera. It's not sensitive enough to see the screen. It's not that the screen is dark, it's just that the camera's for some reason not sensitive enough. But my SJ4000 action cam can see it. Uh, the only downside of that is you're getting this sort of distorted barrel view. But you're still going to get to see all the functions and stuff of this camera. Now I am going to be using a small light uh, so I can see the controls on the controller. Uh, that make it. You may see that now and again, but there we go. Right, so what we can do with this thing is if we hit menu. Now the infrared port is at the back. I thought that wouldn't work uh, with the controller at the front, but it is. So you've got picture mode here, which uh, you can change. You can change contrast, brightness, colour, sharpness, uh, tint in some menus, <coughs> but not here, obviously. Uh, now to get back, uh, let's escape. Oh, okay. Right, uh, so that's picture mode. Uh, you can, if I select that, there are presets, dynamic, where the writing doesn't quite fit right there, uh, and standard, mild. So there are presets, or you can change it yourself. That tint doesn't seem to be able to change. I don't know why they've done that. Don't ask me. So, uh, you could change colour temperature. Uh, medium. Oh, 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 oh. Menu. Right, colour temperature. So, medium, warm. Or you can set it yourself. So you do have quite a bit of control over the system. Fine, I'll go to aspect ratio. Uh, you can change this between 16 
nine and four three. There's also zoom things there, but uh, again, they don't seem. Oh, hang on. No, you can't select. It's always auto. Oh no, sorry. Come here. Let's get back in the menu. Right, so you can select between auto, but it detects itself. 43 or 69. I keep it on 69 for the movies. Well, I'll have to change that when I show you some photographs. Noise reduction. Oh, no, I don't really. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Noise reduction off. That's going to be keeping the fan down, isn't it? Low, medium, high, default. Don't seem to be able to change that. It seems to be stuck. Uh, so I suspect the software is made for several different uh, machines. So we've got Zoom. See what that does. Zoom out. Alright. <coughs> Maybe useful in films. <coughs> I've not found out anywhere. I've not found any application for that and sometimes it jumps out by itself so you've got rotate which is very handy there you go you can rotate, rotate backwards rotate upside down backwards loads of options there, no problems okay, it looks from there like you could go further down but there isn't so if you go right uh, you can go to the sound and you've got different sound, uh, sound options, movie, sports for user. I'll go a movie because I like bass. Bass is good. And uh, from that menu you can also uh, change the balance. Now it's got auto volume off. Uh, you can't change that. So I have no idea what it's included. Uh, Again, I suspect these are used for several different projectors. Uh, right, where were we? We were going to the right. There we go. Surround off. You can't. Ch oh, can you change it? Surround. I saw it's too surround. Hmm. Go back and have a look. Was it? Ah, right, it does. Okay, so. But this has no surround output, so I don't see why. Uh, that's even an option. Right. And once again it jumps out. Which can get irritating. Uh, SPDIF mode PCM. <coughs> uh, there's nothing there. So obviously that's for a different projector. And equaliser you can change the frequencies. That's about it. Alright, let's go more. You've got a clock. Yep. And you can change the languages, restore, fe, 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 fe. not going to check so far. <coughs> there seems to be an auto uh, out of menu and it just doesn't go off your last click, it just goes off total time spent in menu by the looks of it. Colour range, it's 255, blending, so look at this colour range thing actually. Yeah. Blending low, don't know what that is. On screen duration, don't know what that is. 15 seconds. Alright, 5 seconds. That's the on screen display. And you can do a software upgrade. update. Oh, uh, don't ask me how to do that. I have no idea. And that's it on the main options. So, let's go and play, shall we? Now, menu. <coughs> There's an escape button here somewhere. Right, so you can, uh, you've got four options here. Movie, photo, text, and music. So, uh, right, okay, movies. Uh, I've put a couple on here. Let's have a look. Uh, I'll show you Star Crash first. Uh, this earlier was loading this movie up much faster, uh, but I've taken it off the card and put it back on. The card seems to be having issues, so it's, it's slowed it down at the moment. But it does load it up fine, and you can see it here clearly. Now I have it playing on the main front speakers at the moment. I shall <coughs> show you it's playing on that for a few moments and then uh, we'll transfer to the speakers in the projector just to give you a quick idea of what it sounds like. But there you go. 
Yeah. Don't know how well the camera's picking that up. But it plays quite reasonably on this. Uh, if I put the big light on, I can now trans uh, take this out and show you what it sounds like on the system itself. Probably going to have to wait a few seconds for some speech. I'm about to turn down, so if you turn it right up, it's, you know, it's never going to be cinema quality. Come on, get us some scenes. Right, yeah, it's never going to be cinema quality, but for a small room, it's uh, more than adequate. Uh, you probably want to plug it into an external source, though, to be honest. So if I turn that back down, uh, what we can do. show you some of the pixelation on this because it's alright from a distance but with it being 320 if you get up close you will see the pixelation and that causes some other issues which we'll see in a moment so if I get out of that in fact I'll pause that come back I'll change the angle and you can see the pixelation okay I've now got the uh camera at a low angle by the projector and hopefully you can see some of the uh, pixelation on that moon there. Uh, this is why this is going to be no good for HD gaming or anything like that because you are going to get a lot of pixelation and uh, that will show in the next video I'm going to show on this. Right, I'm sure you want to I'll be right back and we'll see what it looks like on here. Obviously the video is in uh, 720p, this downscales it, but you can probably see the pixelation uh, on this one quite clearly. There we go. If I pause, you can see there's quite a bit of pixelation on these lines here from HD being scaled down and then being 320p. It's still watchable, just. Uh, but there is a lot of pixelation, so this is not something to use if you're going to be on top of the screen. You might want a fair distance away from it, perhaps as far back as the projector. So uh, HD gaming, I think, is uh, out of the equation, but we will look at that in a moment, just to check for you. So, <coughs> that's one of my videos. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Now, what we're going to do is uh, work our way around this menu and look at the other things. But first of all, uh, we've got photos, so I need to change the aspect ratio back, Ooh. back to 4.3. Okay, and if I go escape, I've got some photos on here, and uh, what we'll do, it will play through them automatically. Cheddar! Right, so these are from my recent mining trip. You can see the pixelation on them. It's, uh, and it's quite uh, bright, but uh, you can probably just the contrast to sort that out. Uh, there we go. Yeah, very washed out pictures uh, there. But, again, playing with the settings might alter that. So, again, if you want high quality uh, picture displays, not the system for you, this one. There we go. There's my doggy, Amy. Isn't she cute? Right, okay, that's enough pictures. Uh, if I go back to the main menu, uh, text. Now, it will display text files. I've got one here, and it's weird. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's trying to do. Okay. Now, if I press OK again, this thing comes up and you can yeah <laughs> this text file has been uh, left justified and it's all weird and I have 
no idea why you'd want to use this to read anything. Well, it's there in case you do, but it's pretty naff, so I would not utilise that at all. Now, one good thing you can do is uh, play music. That's a little play here, and it will play the music for your amazing Press, pause, mute, stop, mute your stuff. You can't get rid of that menu at the bottom as far as I can. Oh, you can. There you go. <laughs> Don't. So, yep, there you go. You can have it just like that. I know that is a little projecting music player for you, reading straight off the USB, which is quite a nice little feature. We like that. So, uh, what we have established so far, HD movies do work with it, as long as it's not got a lot of text in them. Uh, old movies look fine on it. You are going to have to do a lot of tweaking to get the colours right on this. It is a pain, but you can get there. Uh, things do tend to look a little bit washed out. Picture and, pic and, uh, and pixelated on the text. Uh, Small text on a movie can become unreadable, but a lot of it isn't. Uh, it works quite well. What I'm going to do now is hook up the PS4 and show you HD gaming on this. This should be entertaining. Okay, here we are with the PS4 plugged in, and as you'll notice straight away, it's practically unusual. Unusual? Unusable. Although uh, it did notice. Uh, that if it's something 1080p had plugged into it and said 1080p at the bottom it's yeah interesting let's uh, let's try and play the game update later it wants updating let's try and play this and see how it goes this doesn't have menus but uh, it's a racing game so uh, <whistles> oh, I need to upload it I may cut this out Okay, here we are, and uh, I think we're at. Uh, I think we're at uh, PS1 level graphics here. It's not worse. Ooh, I can turn that down to quite loud. Again, it's quite washed out, but that's probably my colour settings that can probably be adjusted. Uh, whatever. Go! I know, I've forgotten how to play it. Oh, there we go. Right, so... Action like this is playable. It's playable, but you're not going to get... Uh, you're not going to get the best experience ever from your PlayStation. Do again to that uh, low resolution. There is nothing on here that I could show you that has. Let's just have a look at uh, just a pinball game, shall we? Yeah, something like a pinball game. Probably later. Uh, okay. Let's see how this goes. Again, this doesn't have complex menus, but as you can see, oh, I've got to sign into PlayStation Network. Date later. Uh, but as you can see, complex menus are not going to be readable on this, so you might want to pass on using this to play video games. This is not your friend. Uh, season 1, whatever, let's just go. Yeah, whatever. You must have logged into PSN and the latest version of Pinball. Oh, go away. What have I got? Uh, season 5 challenges my table. Let's go. And again, quite washed out colours, but that might be just due to my settings on the machine. I've forgotten how to use this because it's been so long since I played it. There we go. And how do I. Oh, that. There we go. Yeah, uh, it makes this quite difficult to play because of the. 
has the least window for old bugger. Yeah, when the bull's moving fast, it makes it difficult to see it, so, uh, not the best. No, I definitely not use this. Not use this for PlayStation 4 games. <clears throat> right, cheap Chinese LED LCD projectors. Any good. Well, at this resolution, you ain't going to be playing PS4 games. You can still watch HD movies, but beware, it will downscale it to 320. So you need to be quite a way back uh, to watch that at, uh, without seeing, seeing the pixels. And you're going to have to do a fair bit of fiddling to get the colours and brightness right on this thing. But it can get reasonable once it's there. Old movies play mostly fine, just uh, the credits and any text is going to be pixelated and you will get pixels running down the edge of things now and again. Applications for this? Well, if you just want to watch documentaries and save the bulb on your main projector, this is probably going to do the job nicely. Uh, other things, if you want a, if you've got a commercial thing and you just want a cheap display, uh, this will probably do the thick job for you. It can play music while projecting the graphics on the wall. It does that nicely? Uh, yeah. So kids' room, kids are going to be happy with this. You can probably use this for older uh, computers, your Commodore 64s and stuff. It probably play those games quite nicely. Uh, so it does have its uses. It. Even on the sales site, it does sell it as a portable projector, and it does say uh, that the picture is not going to be perfect on this to look elsewhere if you want professional quality pictures. But it does have its applications, and uh, the final decision is going to be yours. But uh, if you want, just getting into projection, and you can get proper projectors at 30 to 50 quid. But they're going to be old, they're going to be usually high uh, high life on the bulbs so you're gambling as to whether that bulb's going to blow soon. Uh, this is going to get probably 20,000 hours and you've got a one year warranty. So if you're just getting into projection and want to see if you're interested in it, this may be the, uh, the first solution to you but just remember if you are going to use it in that sort of thing to remember that proper projectors are going to provide a far superior experience to this. Uh, this is not state of the art, obviously. So, if you are interested in getting this as a second projector or filming, uh, sorry, showing documentaries, or for your kids to have a bigger screen on the wall, uh, I've got a link to the uh, seller I bought it from, uh, who, who uh, gives you the glasses as well. We have to do a separate program on them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yep, his link is below. Uh, he uh, did provided a good service. So there you go. So if you like the video, then please press the like button. It does help. If you want to see more of these videos, then please subscribe. We've got loads of past videos and future videos to come. And uh, my social media is down below. So thank you. Of all, how much? You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>